Hey everyone, it's Andrzej Krzywda from 2100 to the International Master title. Thanks for being with me in the chess journey. Today I would like to show you a game I played with Mieszko Misz, uh, a 2300 player, um, was, which was played one month ago. And we started with... Uh, what, I will, what I'm going to do today is that I will quickly show you the whole game so that you can see how it ended and then we can see what were the problems and then we will try to come back and uh, I will show you some lines uh, which might have been better for me uh, before. So I played black and this time it was easier to prepare because my opponent is a very active young player and I found many games in database so I knew what he plays against different lines so I thought that actually this time the Queen's Indian might, might actually work and I was right because I was actually quite happy with what I received from the opening. So I played the Queen's Indian uh, but we quickly switched to the uh, Benoni line so here we have the typical Benoni structure. Uh, my bishop on b7 might be not, not the most active, but on the other hand, knight h4 is not also not the best, um, not on the best position here. So a6, a4, knight d7, and knight f3. This is like another kind of tabia. And here, um, here I decided to go aggressively. So I played like queen c7 would be probably a normal move. It was a move played by one 2500 player. But I played b5 and I think it's a good idea overall because uh, I will show it later but a b5, a b5, knight b5, knight e4 is not really uh, good for white. Okay, so let's see what happens. So I quickly created a pressure on the queen side. I've had really good pawns supported by quite okay pieces and my pawn went to c3 well supported and I think it's black who is pressuring here but however it's not so, it's not so easy. and. After some maneuvering, I was trying to build a pressure on the queen side again, and I allowed my opponent at this moment to sacrifice the exchange and to eliminate the c3 pawn and create my uh, black squares very weak. On the other hand, I should be able to grab the a5, a5 pawn, and I did that. Um, and so so far, I'm keeping the uh, the, the his attack um, safe, but then I. Uh, this queen a5 move was very bad because I allowed rook a2 and suddenly his, all his pieces are very good and suddenly from a good position I went to a very difficult position and his counter attack was super strong and I was already uh, in a time trouble so it was very difficult to defend and I quickly collapsed here and really my opponent played a very good chess in this part of the game um, yeah so I had to resign there is Several things uh, worth noting at the end of the game. One is that the bishop didn't really play any role in that game. Like it was just staying on b7 and didn't do anything. And I, I even had to spend some time moving it back from b7 to a8 at some point, like uh, like here. So and it was always um, it was always mm, limited by the a e4 and d5 pawns so and a5 was always a problematic move because knight b5 and then I have problems with my d6 pawn so let's go back to the beginning of the game and see what were the possibilities here I'll skip the opening part because this is quite a normal line uh, so yeah b5 b5 and then uh, a b5 a b5 so this is a potential potential line knight e4 and I think this is like this is some kind of position that could appear and I think it's a very good position for black uh, because of the weakness of the d5 and this should be fine for, for black. So queen c2 allowing me to play b4 and all this setup wouldn't be so strong for black if if white manages to play knight d2, knight c4 suddenly that would be actually very bad for black. But on the other hand I have calculated that I have this uh, rook c8 com combined with early c4 and um, knight c4 is not possible because knight b6, b3, knight takes and knight e4 and bishop g7 takes on a1 so this is the line where it doesn't really work uh, that well. Uh, playing c4 here was a good idea but here is probably one of my main um, problems in that game uh, is that I did calculate rook c3, I did calculate bc3 but there were just only two moves I calculated. I didn't calculate all the candidate moves. And when we were analyzing this with uh, Stasiu Praczukowski, so thank, thanks, to, thanks to him for helping here, 
we found lots of different ideas that were possible here. So BC3 is a good move, but on the other hand, look, this position is looking not that good for white when it comes to pieces. And But after knight b3, you know, he's suddenly getting some coordination and it, I no longer have really that much chances here. I, probably I'm a bit better, but it's not a big advantage. Instead, there there is the idea of knight g4, which I, to be honest, I didn't consider either this at this move. I only played it, um, sorry, knight g4 now. So I don't have to recapture again. So that, that was a problem uh, with me not noticing an intermediate move. And intermediate moves, they are a huge weapon. Uh, in calculating and you know, kind of trying to find a ways of uh, getting the opponent into trouble. So knight g4 will be very strong here. There are several options here. Um, rook b1, for example, we can play rook c3, queen d1, and queen b6. And notice how strong is the activity. So now we are attacking f2, uh, rook e2, a5, and for example, h3. There's h3 is not the only move, but overall, um, even maybe I wonder what was the idea. Oh, because we also analyzed bishop h3, so that was another idea. And in here, we can even consider a move like f5. And this is another thing in this game that I have to admit, even though I, I suppose I know a little bit about Benoni, but I'm not an expert in Benoni, mm, I didn't really consider the f5 moves that much but but this was like the most important idea in this kind of position because uh, remember my bishop it didn't play f5 is the way even if it is at the cost of a pawn if i get my bishop to d5 for example because i i create a pawn lever here and if after e f5 i play bishop d5 then i'm then i'm really good with my pieces um yeah so there are some crazy lines that we looked at uh, I will not show all of them because like this is too, that's too much time, but that's the spirit of Benoni overall that we try to find uh, some tactics and some dynamics in the position. So another line was with the bishop b2, uh, with the combined with the h5. Uh, what else did we look at? Uh, queen, queen c5 was an idea. Uh, queen c7, bishop a6. Yeah, so after bishop b2, we can also play bishop a6 uh, because we're also threatening. And we, over we even look at some crazy lines where we try to sacrifice the queen, but it didn't uh, work in the end. Knight d5 was another idea that we looked at. Uh, so even after h3, we don't re react by uh, going back, but we play knight d5. But here it wasn't really that clear what is happening. There is an interesting line that after knight e5 we can play rook g3. And after uh, king h1 we've got uh, knight f2, rook f2, queen f2, and this should be winning. And I think there, there is a checkmate everywhere. Yeah, so bishop d4 should be ending this. There, so, so that was the idea with knight g4. Uh, with rook c3, uh, I didn't like it that much because then he gets some uh, activity with bishop b2. Maybe I can play knight c5 because there is the spirit that you, know, you can sacrifice and exchange in this kind of position and very often it's totally okay. Okay, so what else was interesting here? Um, Yes, yeah, so that was after knight c5, knight b3. Okay, so this was another moment where I played knight de5 here, while this was a very good moment to play f5, especially that the knight f3 is hanging. So let's say e f5, rook e1, knight e1, bishop d5, fg6, bishop e5, and there's this crazy line g h7, king h8, let's say knight. Um, so, for example, knight d3, yeah, knight d3, then we have queen h4, that was amazing, um, with the idea of if gh4, then uh, bishop h2 mate. So, a crazy line, but it shows what's important in this kind of position. So, f5, f5 was the move that I should play. So, even if I missed knight g4 before, uh, in this moment playing, sorry, there's a chess-based bug that 
things are disappearing sometimes. Um, f5 uh, is in the spirit of this position and it should be played. And I, that's my mistake that I didn't consider this. Uh, then after we played some of the moves, I probably shouldn't allow um, giving the exchange here that easily because it simplified a lot. But still, I think the position was uh, maybe this is a like kind of a key moment here because the the white pieces they don't look good. But suddenly when they when I allow rook c3 somehow, then uh, and they suddenly get some activity because the bishop is playing and if I if I give this bishop uh, away then I have a big problem with the safety of the king so that suddenly we have a problem but so but still so far it should be still good I don't know maybe I should pressure with queen b4 here I don't know uh, so it all looked looked good until here I took it with the rook that was okay and that was an important moment because in here maybe a five would be a move here. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, so the problem was so maybe sorry, uh maybe in this in this position playing f5 would be another idea. So I'm very weak on this side, on the other hand, but on the other hand, I did I do create the pressure on this diagonal. So I don't know, g5, gf5. And even if he goes somewhere here, then I then I have the queen, so I can exchange the queens. So maybe g h g f five is not so good for him. Maybe queen f six, um, but then queen f seven should be fine. Yeah. So that that was so still the the idea of f five would save me in several moments here, uh, but I didn't play that, and because of that. And because of actually blundering, so in this, this was a blunder, rook a, allowing rook a2 with a tempo against the queen and opening all the pieces was just a terrible blunder here. And look at this bishop, it's like the victim of the position here. Uh, doesn't help much, doesn't do it, it's just, you know, problematic. Even though it was alive till the end, it just, it wasn't even worth more than, I don't know, his pawn here. Yeah, so some lessons learned for me. Uh, not enough candidate moves. I didn't consider knight g4, I didn't consider f5 moves. I should have added them as candidate moves, so I need to work on this area. Uh, I have, I think I have overestimated my position overall. I, I do remember my feeling during the game, and I, I'm usually I'm the one overestimating a little bit, which is sometimes okay, it's okay to be a little bit optimistic. But in this position, my opponent defended really well, and he was like waiting for the counterattack, so really, really good play by my opponent. Um, and I underestimated the weakness of my bishop on b7. Also, when he played rook a2, it still wasn't really losing losing the game. Uh, I should still be able to defend, but it was such a surprise for me that I it was very hard for me to switch to a mindset that I'm now defending and suddenly the, the, the evaluation of the position changed dramatically. But it was still possible to hold the position. It was just required some mental effort to... To, to focus and after rook a2 I was like I collapsed basically and that was a problem uh, so I need to work on that and you know try to re readjust maybe my time trouble was also a problem here maybe even though given the position was really not so complicated to play at the beginning there was not so much complications I didn't play moves like f5 for example so it was relatively easy to play I shouldn't use that much time so that's another problem with that position uh, I hope you liked this video. Uh, I hope you learned something from it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting me and see you in the next uh, video. And once again, once again, thanks to Stasiu Praczykowski for the help here.